if you're looking to reduce those thermal numbers when playing indie games on your Steam Deck, or if you'd like to squeeze out a bit more performance from those AAA games, those, those are both possible while also gaining a little bit of extra battery life in some situations thanks to undervolting. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to undervolt your Steam Deck and squeeze out as much as possible from the hardware. Not only that, but I'll also point you in the direction of two stability testing tools that you can run if you're interested in that sort of thing. But before we can begin this guide, you will need to know how to access BIOS on your Steam Deck. This is something that I have already created a dedicated video on. So in an attempt to not make this video longer than it needs to be, please go and check out that guide if you're not familiar with booting the Steam Deck into the BIOS utility tool menu. Now that you are here, let's dive into the actual setup utility menu. And then let's go to the advanced section. Then from here, you just want to scroll through this list until you get to the CPU, GPU, and SOC voltage offset entries. Now there are going to be different approaches to undervolting your Steam Deck. Some will suggest that you go hog wild and set all three of these to negative 50. Then reboot your Steam Deck and test out those settings to see how your device runs. You will likely immediately know whether or not you hit the silicone lottery as the device may have difficulty booting up. You may see your favorite game crash when trying to play it, or you may end up seeing artifacts on the screen. If you notice any of those issues, then your hardware is unable to cope with the reduced voltage and you'll need to reboot back into BIOS and try it again. So again, some people will suggest you change all three of these settings to negative 50 and then try it. And that's one way of seeing what the limits of your Steam Deck undervolting are. Another way is to take the slow and steady approach. This requires us to start with small changes and then doing a full suite of stability tests to find out if it works well. So with this approach, we would go in and set all three of these to negative 10. I actually prefer this approach as it would allow me to know which increment actually caused the issue. Because if I had set these to negative 50 and tried it, I wouldn't know if it was the CPU GPU or SOC that was having trouble with that negative 50 millivolt offset. So instead, I would like to set all of these to negative 10. Come down here to the exit. Then we're going to exit while saving changes. And then after I booted back into SteamOS, I would go and test to see if this Steam Deck had any issues with that negative 10 millivolt offset. After doing some testing, if I noticed that it's handling it really well, then I would reboot back into BIOS and increase those settings again. The second time around, maybe I would set them all to negative 20, boot back into SteamOS, and then do more testing. I've seen comments from some Steam Deck owners who are able to hit negative 50 millivolts across the board and had no issues playing a game that they were interested in. 
many people are only able to adjust these down to negative 20 before they start seeing any issues. So the goal is to find out what your personal Steam Deck tolerance is. Some people will do this by just playing a game that they want to play and see if that game is able to handle these changes. While others will like to take this a little further and run their device through full stress tests. If you're really wanting to stress test the hardware, then I can recommend a program called M Prime, which can be downloaded from the Discover Store via desktop mode on the Steam Deck. I've also seen the Unigen benchmark suggested, with the superposition test being great at making sure your undervolting hasn't introduced any stability issues. You may find that your Steam Deck can only handle negative 50, negative 30, and negative 40, while others will notice that the only way their Steam Deck will remain stable is at negative 20, negative 30, negative 20. The quality of the hardware inside of your Steam Deck can vary compared to a different one. So don't expect to be able to undervolt your Steam Deck to the same level that you see from someone else in the community. The process of zeroing in on the exact limit that your Steam Deck can handle can be long and tedious. And that's why some folks will be happy to set these three to negative 20 millivolts and call it a day because they will be able to get some of the benefits of undervolting their Steam Deck without having to put in a lot of time. But others will take their time finding out the exact numbers that their hardware is happy with. I hope this video has been helpful to show just how easy it is to undervolt your Steam Deck. As long as you understand that this isn't going to cause any permanent damage to your hardware, and in fact, in some cases, it will actually help to prolong its longevity. But the important thing is to not panic when doing these tests. Remember that you can always reboot the Steam Deck back into BIOS and undo those changes, reverting them back to exactly how they were when you first started using the device. So if you feel up to it, go and undervolt your Steam Deck and see just how much it's able to handle.